Welcome back to another one of Everything Wednesdays. I am your host, Mr. Bevers. That's right, we're back again with a new shop. This time, this shop is Heroic Dreams, located in Oshawa. Or, I guess this is located in Pickering, I should say. My goodness. Get get the get the place right. So, it's located in Pickering. Um, and uh, it was a little interesting shop. They had a lot of product. Holy moly, did they have a lot of stuff. Um, it was in, like, a small like basement apartment I guess is what you would call it except that it was like a store so like it was like just chock full of stuff it was crazy lots of stuff really interesting little shop um let's uh let's get right into talking about the packs they had though they did have quite a few they had 12 so they had war of the spark guilds of ravnica ravnica allegiances corset 2019 rivals of ixalan unstable aether revolt Eldritch Moon, Shadows over Innistrad, Oath of the Gatewatch, Battle for Zendikar, and Fate Reforged. What a weird smattering of packs, right? Just kind of like randomly... A random assortment of packs they had, I guess. Who knows? So, uh, we'll put these up here like this. That seems like a good plot place for them, right? Right there. And of course, we always start with the newest set first, because that's what everyone's seen the most of. And we want to move into, like, the older stuff as we move along. So, of course, War of the Spark is first. We all know here there's not really any commons of note that we need to worry about too much in there. Uh, Bleeding Edge, not a bad little uncommon. Elite Guard Mage. And then, of course, we've got a Sweet Narset. Now, I don't know what the, uh, the Planeswalkers and stuff are running for these days. Um, we can definitely uh, put them aside for the patron pile as well if people are interested. Um, I don't, so Narset is sitting in like a $3 uncommon, which doesn't make, you know, doesn't surprise me because it is very good. It's a very good uncommon, uh, Walker shutting off your opponent's ability to draw extra cards is pretty sweet. And then our rare is a roll reversal. So there you go. Oh, and we got a foil, a foil forced landing. There you go, and just a swamp and a servo token. All right, all right, starting starting off pretty decent actually. Okay, guilds of Ravnica, or sorry, this is the wrong pack. We put these in the wrong order. We gotta. Okay, we'll leave that over there. You guys saw nothing. You saw nothing. Ravnica allegiances is first. How did I put those in the wrong order? I have no idea. I always stack these up in in the order of their sets before I start. I don't know how I managed to uh, flip those two. But anyway, Ravnica Allegiances is next. Um, I, again, I don't think there's any commons that we need to worry too much about. Skewer the Critics is pretty good. Uh, it does see a lot of play. I don't think any of these other ones are something that we need to worry about too much. Bankrupt in Blood. Blood Mist Infiltrator. Code of Constraint. And Godless Shrine. Nice. Got a little shock land. We'll take it. And of course, we got an Azorius Guildgate. With our ooze token. All right. Guilds of Ravnica is next. Oh, oh, the pack's open already. How did that happen? I don't know. Did you guys see? Like, did someone come in and open the pack before I got to it? I don't know. Maybe. I think that's probably likely. Might of the Masses. The Dev Champion. Wand of Vertebrae. And Emera. Soul of the Accord. Not a bad little uh, rare. Sees play in the token deck, for sure, in the Selesnia token deck. And of course, speaking of Selesnia, we got a Selesnia guilt gate. So there you go. Corset 2019. Okay. Nickel Bolas. Flippy B. Flippy B. Right? It's about time we opened one. We've opened, I don't know how many packs of 2019, and we haven't opened a Nicky B. I don't know how to, how to put this off. Gift of Paradise. Murder! Gargoyle Sentinel. And Magistrate Scepter. That's not a nickel bolus. Oh, see? See? Every time. Every time. 
He's like, <laughs> fooled ya. Fooled ya. And I'm like, yeah, I'm you crafty damn dragon. All right, Rivals of Ixalan is next. Um, a couple things to note out of Rivals of Ixalan, I guess. Uh, Merfolk, Mistbinder. Don't know if this uncommon is worth anything, but we'll put it to the side just in case. Forsaken Sanctuary, not not anything of interest there. Just a tap land. Aquatic Incursion. Ooh, how about the Immortal Sun? Yes, please. Especially with all those Planeswalkers kicking around these days. We will take it. Oh, and a miscut island. Interesting. Huh. How about that? We got ourselves a extremely miscut island. You can see here. Look at how high up the top border is there. You can even see the little white dots on the edges. That's the cut line. And you can see how close the text is to the bottom of the card. Right? And in comparison, like, right, we just compare it to a War of the Spark card. You can see how close... The text is to the bottom of the card here on the island compared to the uh, swamp. There is almost no space at the bottom of the Ixalan card, and there is, you know, probably a couple millimeters of black space at the bottom of the swamp. So that's interesting. It's always interesting to get, like, those miscuts. Now, had this been a little bit further, right? Had it been a little bit further, you can really tell it on the back of the card, too. Like, look how far that border is at the top there. But uh, if it had been a little bit further and this was cut off and you were getting like the little tail end of the other card above it at the top, it would be worth money to somebody because uh, it's now got two cards on it, essentially. Unstable is next. Just something to keep an eye out for in your collections, everybody. If you have miscut cards, don't think that they're necessarily damaged. They're highly collectible because they are essentially rarer than the normal prints. All right, I forget about this. I've got this is unstable and like it's got okay, so like that's our commons, and then here's our uncommons, proper uh, laboratory attire, hammer jammer, five finger discount, and cramped bunker. What a weird card this is. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player moves a permanent he or she controls to touch cramped bunker and no other permanents. Uh, if he or she can't destroy each permanent that player controls that isn't touching cramped bunker, then sacrifice it. So the idea here is that you want to try and like get as many cards as you can touching this. Right? Like, and it's your opponents, right? At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player moves a permanent touching this. So if you're playing a multiplayer game... This gets out of hand real fast and your opponents lose a lot of their things because the cramped bunker can't have too many stuff in it. Too much stuff in it. So, interesting. An interesting little card. And of course, we got our sweet full art planes there. And then, of course, our our machines, which have the weird back on them for uh, turning the cogs. If you've never played Unstable, I highly suggest you go and watch um, some of the, you know, uh, videos about how to play it or watch some of the games that were played with it because... It's hilarious. And if you can get your hands on a box to play with your friends, by all means do so. Because the set was hilarious and amazing. And it was actually a really fun set to play, uh, even though it's like a, a joke set, as they say. And of course, we got a foil sapperling that has the nice full art sapperling on the back. Uh, highly suggest the, the, the one by these people here, these fine people who signed this playmat, the, the LRR crew. Uh, they do the pre-pre-release, and the pre-pre-release for Unstable actually had Mark Rosewater there. So that would be my suggestion. If you want to go watch Unstable play, go watch that. Aether Revolt is next. Now, Aether Revolt, um, we have the ability to possibly get a masterpiece out of here, I guess. This is the thing. Foundry Hornet. The chances of that happening are probably very slim, but they are there. They are there. A Peace Walker Colossus. Nothing super exciting there, is it? And just a token Ragavan and an island. All right, Eldritch Moon, though. Now, Eldritch Moon, and it's a Liliana pack. So, if this is a first print run, that means that this could have a higher chance of having a Mythic in it, right? Because if you all remember that debacle... <laughs> if you all remember that debacle... The, uh, when the set first came out, when Elvish Moon first came out, the Liliana packs had a higher chance of having a Mythic in them, which was very strange. Abandon Reason. 
Subjugator Angel, Chilling Grasp, and our rare is a Stitcher's Graft. Now, I didn't count the commons, but I think there was a lower number there. So, of course, we've got our rare, and then we have a flip, and then a foil, maybe? And we didn't hit the Liliana, because the Liliana would be the one to hit out of this set, right? I think. We got another foil. Or not a foil, another rare. We got another rare. So we had a Kessig Prowler, and now we have a Voldaren Pariah, which turns into the Abolisher of Bloodlines. Look, there's even like a goat head there. Creepy. Creepy. And then, of course, an insect token in a land. Next up, Shadows over Innistrad. Again, same sort of idea. It uh, If it has eight commons, then you get a flip rare or a foil. So, like... So no additional flip rare or foil in this pack, unfortunately. Incorrigible Utes. You incorrigible Utes. Tenacity. Murderer's Axe. And Corrupted Graftstone. So it enters battlefield tapped. You can choose a color of a card in your graveyard. Add a mana of that color. And we got Gatstaff Arsonists, which turns into the Gatstaff Ravagers. Some Werewolf Mans. And a zombie token with a checklist card. All right, Oath of the Gatewatch. Again, another set that has masterpieces in it. This store had uh, three sets that have masterpieces in them. It's surprising to me that they were on the shelf still, to be honest. Null Caller. Cinder Barons. Good old Cinder Barons. Reflector Mage. This card was a couple bucks, and then it got banned in Standard. Remember that? I remember that. And our rare is a Goblin Dark Dwellers. There you go. And we got a Foil Full Art Island. Look at that. Look at that spicy card right there. That's pretty sweet. And then, of course, a Full Art Mountain. And a Sapperling token. We'll take a Full Art. We'll take a Foil Full Art. We definitely will. There's not even a question in my mind. Battle for Zendikar is next. Same idea here. We could have an Expedition in here. Highly doubtful, but we could. Vampiric Rites. Spawning Bed. Wind Rider Patrol, and a Brood Butcher. There you go. With, of course, our Full Art Planes and our Eldrazi Scion. Fate Reforged, last but not least. This set has the possibility of fetches in the land slot at the back, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So we could see a fetch in here randomly, which would be pretty cool. Well, I mean, we could see Ugin, the the OG Ugin man. Battlefront Kurshok, Wild Slash, Noxious Dragon, and Ojitai, Soul of Winter. Hey, I mean, like a, a white-blue dragon boy, right? Why not, right? Flying Vigilance, uh, whenever a dragon you control attacks, tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls. That permanent doesn't untap during that controller's next untap step. And we got a foil rare! Scroll of the Masters. So when you cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on Scroll of the Masters. Pay three, tap, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, until end of turn for each lore counter on Scroll of the Masters. Oh man, how how hype would it have been if we had had a fetch as well? So a rare, a foil rare, and then a fetch. That would have been crazy. That would have been a crazy way to end that last pack. And we got a Wind Scarred Crag with our first junk token. Did you see that, everybody? Our first ad card. First ad card. Not too bad, considering we opened 12 packs. We only got one ad card. Not bad, not bad. Um, we added some pretty interesting stuff to the patron pile this week, that's for sure. We got a Narset, we got a Godless Shrine, we got an Immortal Sun. Um, I We got, the, of course, the Full Art Plains. We got a Foil Island Full Art. Um, we got a Foil Rare here. We got an additional Rare out of the Eldritch Moon pack. So, like, some interesting stuff. Um... Pretty decent, pretty decent haul, I would say. Pretty decent haul. And so check out Heroic Dreams. There should be a link below in the description to their store. Um, check them out if you're in and around the area. Uh, the people there were pretty nice. They were very uh, helpful, and they had a lot of product. So check them out, because there was other stuff other than just booster packs. They had a lot of Funko Pops, and they had a lot of comics, and they had a lot of uh, Warhammer and Star, Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. They had all those things, and then they also had... A lot of other magic products sealed that was not booster packs. So, like, you know, pre-release kits and 
uh, event decks and things like that. So they had a lot of stuff in, in the cabinet. I took a look at a, at a bunch of it, um, and I may have picked up some of it, but not all of it. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been your host, Mitch Rivers. This has been a one of Everything Wednesdays. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, may your pulls ever be better. Thank you.